Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are going to be baking two different types of cakes, tidying up around the kitchen, and playing with my kids. So let's get to it. So we're starting off this afternoon by making a tres leches cake for my father-in-law's 60th birthday party. I'm actually making a double batch today in this video, so I will be putting the double batch recipe on the screen and putting the single batch recipe down below in the description box for your guys' convenience. This was actually my first time making this cake. I wanted it to be perfect for my father-in-law for his birthday party, so I was really nervous, but it ended up being a hit and my in-laws loved it. Actually, my mother-in-law thought that they had bought the cake. <laughs> so it made me really happy that it turned out so well. So I'm excited to share this recipe with you guys if you, in, you know, are interested in trying to make this for yourself. So we're actually gonna start by just sifting the dry ingredients and setting that aside. And then we're gonna take our egg whites and the smaller amount of sugar. In this case, I think I used half a cup and we're gonna be beating those until they form stiff peaks. This is how we are going to incorporate a lot of air into the, our cake. With the yolks and the larger amount of sugar, we are going to beat this until it becomes like a really pale yellow color and is nice and fluffy. And you can really see it kind of change on the screen. By doing this, we're also incorporating a lot of air and this is how we're getting our cake to rise. After the egg yolks and the sugar have been beaten, we're gonna add in our milk and vanilla to this liquidy mixture so that it just becomes like nice and uniform. And then we're gonna add this to our dry ingredients and mix until it's you know well combined, no lumps, just mix it all up. Once this mixture is nice and smooth, we are gonna fold in our egg whites. And we really want to just go nice and slow and you can like scoop from the outside and put it in the center of the egg whites and then just can kind of continue mixing that way. And we just wanna mix just until all of the big clumps are done. We don't wanna keep mixing after that point because Again, we're incorporating a lot of the air that was in the egg whites into this mixture. And if we keep mixing, we're gonna get rid of a lot of that extra little air bubbles. So just mix until the egg whites are, you know, kind of disappeared. And then we're going to grease our baking dish and pour in our batter. So again, I'm doing a double batch here. One batch would just make one of these like nine by 13 casserole pans. I actually got these two for $1.25 now at the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna bake this at 350 for about a half an hour. I suggest checking at like 20, 25 minutes um, just to see if a toothpick comes out clean. And then while the cakes are cooling, we're gonna make our three milk mixture. And I actually added in a little bit of vanilla into this mixture. I saw that you know some people online recommended um, putting vanilla, so I just figured a little splash of vanilla you know, might be good and it ended up being a hit, so I will continue to do that in the future. Once the cakes have pretty much cooled down to room temperature, you wanna poke holes all over the cake. I started by using a fork and then I noticed it was like kind of pulling up some of the cake. So I just switched to a little wooden, um, not like a toothpick, but like a skewer. And then once you have holes poked all over the cake, we're gonna pour in our milk mixture and pour that on top. I actually had to make it you know, two separate times rather than all at once because it didn't fit into my little um, cup. So that is why I only use like half of the ingredients the first time that you guys saw me make that. And um, then once 
the milk mixture has been poured over the cake. So we're going to, you know, cover that, put it in the fridge, set it to, you know, cool off and soak in all of that milk. So once I was done making those cakes, I figured since I had some other cakes to make for an upcoming party prep video, um, like I'm doing like a Halloween party, I figured, you know, I have all this stuff out, I'm using all the same ingredients, why not make those cakes now? So I'm just making a vanilla cake that I've made a million times on my channel, and I'm dyeing it orange, and later you will see me making a chocolate buttercream frosting and dyeing that black. And I will be assembling this cake in a future video. But while those cakes were in the oven, I only had two pans and I had to make six little cake layers, so I was going back and forth between taking care of Jack and doing laundry and baking as well. Damage the fix, but we're just working through a little rust. They like to say we're just young, but I know we won't give this up. Sometimes I lose my mind, and some days it's hard to find the reason why you stay by my side. You <laughs> Aubrey, what are you doing? You are literally laying in the rain. You're gonna get soaked out here. You like being cozy with your puppy in the rain? I've got a weirdo, folks. <laughs> so, moving on, uh, it seems like, you know, there's always a job to do around the kitchen. So, I decided to open up a pomegranate that my sister gave us from their backyard. We're hoping to get one of these trees for ourselves. So, someday I'll be able to show our pomegranate seeds. But I'm opening this up. I find this very, like, therapeutic to get all the seeds out. Because uh, I know that Juan and Aubrey, you know, love pomegranate seeds. I actually just like the juice, but... I will eat the seeds if they're presented to me. And then while I was in this spot in the kitchen, I figured I'd get all the rest of like the little odds and ends dishes, you know, washed and drying on my little sink rack. So here I'm just packaging up the last of my cakes. Um, we're gonna be freezing these layers and then I actually assemble the cake with the layers frozen. It actually makes it a little bit easier on me. So I can actually make these cakes well ahead of time and then you know, take them out as needed, which is really nice. It saves time and helps me not stress so much when a party is approaching. Next, I'm moving on to preparing the strawberries for the Tres Leches cake. Uh, I'm gonna be using these to top the cake, and so I'm just washing them in a water vinegar mixture, letting them kind of soak, and then I will be cutting them up and storing them, kind of separating the, like the really ripe ones from the fairly ripe ones from the not so ripe ones. So uh, anyways, I'm going to be separating those and, you know, just kind of getting them ready for the next day when I'm assembling the cake. So I've made my chocolate frosting. I'm trying to dye it as black as possible, but it just doesn't seem like it's getting super black. I'm hoping that when I finally assemble the cake, 
it will look a little bit darker than it does, but it was very delicious. I'm like super excited for the cake. I'm glad I had two little cupcakes left over of the cake batter. And um, I did set aside some white frosting and I'm gonna be piping on like little ghosts on the side of the cake. So I'm excited to show you guys when that finally, you know, takes place. But my tongue was definitely like black or bluish after eating that cupcake. So I apologize to the future guests that come to this party. Uh, if your tongue gets stained, I, you know, I'm sorry, but it, it's just the way it has to be for a Halloween party. I need that black and orange. I thought it would really look cool. So anyways, after all of those chores were done and everything, I moved on to opening up a new little toy for Aubrey. So I would like to thank Sanderson for sponsoring this portion of today's video. They sent us this fun drum set for Aubrey to play with. And I have to say it was really easy to set up. On the bottom of the box, there were just picture instructions. I don't even think there were words now that I think about it. There were just like little pictures right next to each other on like what, you know, each step was. And I was able to complete this in, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something, somewhere, somewhere around there, I think. And Aubrey was having fun with like the parts that I hadn't used yet. She was, she creates a whole bunch of impressive figures with random objects so she was having fun while I was assembling this and then you guys will get to see her kind of create her own music and thankfully Jack is a pretty good sleeper so he didn't wake up because he was already in bed at this point he didn't wake up while we played with our new drum set if this seems like something that you are interested in purchasing, I will go ahead and put the link to the product in down below in the description box for your convenience. Now let's go ahead and check out Aubrey having fun with her new toy. I love making music. <laughs> Can you play happy birthday? No, that's a too easy one. That's too easy? Yeah, I'm just going on one jump. Oh, okay. Well, what song would be just right? Uh, I guess, do you want to do one? Do whatever song you think will be good. No, you can't. Um, welcome to the show. So as you could tell, Aubrey really loved this little toy. I actually had some fun playing with it too, but you know, it, she's cuter than I am. So we're just going to see her on the screen. Again, I would like to thank Sanderson for sponsoring this portion of today's video and giving Aubrey and I a really fun toy to keep us busy throughout the day. Okay, so it is the next morning, the day of the party for my father-in-law's birthday party. And I am making the whipped cream topping using just heavy whipping cream and sugar. I decided to do this the day of because my experience with homemade whipped cream is that a lot of the times it will like start to liquefy again. And I really didn't want that. So I, you know, made this the morning of, you can see my nice soaked cake. There's not a lot of extra like milk mixture. So that means like everything was nicely absorbed. It's a very moist cake. And then once my frosting is nice and whipped, you don't want to over whip it, but you just want it to be nice and fluffy. We're going to cover this cake with the whipped cream frosting. And there's like a good like three quarters of an inch thick uh, bit of frosting on the cake. So it's um, not as rich or sweet as like a buttercream. So having this much is a very good amount for the amount of cake that you're getting. Once my cakes were completely frosted, I topped them with berries. 
So next time if I do it like this, just covering the top, I'd probably just dice the strawberries even smaller so that it's easier to cut the cake. Or if I know how many people are gonna be at the party, which I didn't in this case, you could kind of prepare little slices and put like a fanned out strawberry on top. But we refrigerated this until it was ready to serve and both of these cakes were consumed. Everyone loved it and I can definitely see making this again in the future. Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video. If you give this recipe a try, let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear how it goes for you. Again, I'd like to thank Sanderson for giving us that amazing drum set, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Woohoo! You've made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.